Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be doing FPV news, some Banggood window shopping, and also talk about products that I've received and just didn't work out of the box and some of the things like some updates as well. I will mix it all up together. It's going to be a pretty long video and uh, I'll hopefully I'll put the table of contents down below if I do speak in order. And uh, this is going to be a new series on my channel, so you can go ahead and check it out if you do like it. We're going to take a look at what are some of the new products currently that just got released and uh, just have a look at them and just see what they uh, offer. So right now we're on the multi-rotor parts and we're checking the newest stuff. This stuff is going to be linked down below in the order I check it out. So if you wanted to follow along, you can go ahead and do that. Now immediately we see that a lot of companies are going for the toothpick products. Like for example, HDLRC here, the 16 by 16 stack, MPU 6000 with 13 amp BL Heli SESC for 40 bucks. That's a great deal. I mean, that's about the price right now of just about every single stack that's really a toothpick whether it's an all-in-one or just a normal stack of this nature usually they range between 40 to 50 bucks sometimes they even come with vtx so this is an f4 and uh you have to be careful where you put your s bus or i bus because you cannot put those on the same exact pad if you do have one of these or you are planning on getting one of these uh what's really nice here they provide you with everything and it's connected via connector as we can tell here 40 bucks is pretty good and it's coming soon so we're gonna go and just scroll around and check something else out here now I did get this board but I got this board from geek buying which we'll double check later on I'll have it tested on one of my other quadcopters as you can tell it doesn't come with the connector so you have to direct solder which I find to be better because it also reduces weight quite dramatically but I don't know the performance of it just yet so we're gonna have to wait on that to uh, check it out so I'm guessing Racerstar and Eashin kind of listened to me uh, about the fact that their products are really taking a deep dive because of the oems they've been having done for them and now as you can tell we have a racer star airbot f7 and it has that red color kind of like the flight one going on for him oh uh, this is a new i think this is a mistake I've, I've never seen this osd before so it has a different osd here f7 it does have flash memory here six uarts and i want to see the gyro does it say anything about the gyro here hmm. oh it's using an icm gyro so it is a sensitive gyro so you got to be careful with this one especially if you're new so i think anyways betaflight stopped supporting the 32k now so that you know you can still use it but uh most of the companies you'll get to find notice they're dropping back down to an mpu 6000 gyro uh bluetooth module supported it doesn't have it it's optional so i don't know where that would connect and what do we have here high side video power switch so what i'm guessing with high side video power switch is it has some sort of a transistor that'll allow you to disable the vtx or turn off the vtx which is really nice uh, i don't know if that's 100 percent accurate but this is what it makes sense to me if it makes sense to anyone else just let me know what it makes sense to you so it does have a 9 volt regulator which is really nice or it includes a 9 volt regulator i don't understand this okay so this is kind of this is, now it's getting a bit confusing here um what we have it's saying it's a single back 3 amp and a dual back 9 volt i think it's just in the same board so um I'm, yeah i'm guessing it's the same board hopefully it's not an extra board here so we have a 9 volt regulator and a 5 volt regulator but don't take my word for it i'm not really sure about this okay so this is a strong pad design so you don't rip off the pads that's really great and there are holes here so they're using via vias right there to connect those through uh that's really great 42 bucks it's it's i wish it was all in one but you know what can i say here and here we have a new stack from the hall from holly bro it's called the kakute f7 hdv now something is a little bit different than usual on these uh new flight controllers from holly bro as you can tell, there's no more soft mounting of the gyro. And the reason for that is they've dropped down to the MPU 6000 gyro. They've also given you a barometer. We have six UARTs available. And obviously, it's an F7. It's using the big F7 here, uh, which has a bit more memory. Uh, and what's really cool here is it's going to take battery voltage up into the flight controller. So you're not going to have to think of any other regulator in order to power this guy. And do we have any other regulators on board other than a 3.3 and a 5 volt? I don't think so. Uh, what do we have here? All right, so here they're stating that it does have an 8 volt output, but I don't know if that's coming from the ESC or the flight controller itself. It's not really mentioning that, but we'll probably see it on the Hollybro website in more detail here. Um, but it is ready for autonomous flight, which means it should be iNav supported. As you can tell, there's already a barometer installed. Uh, that's that's really great to have. And uh, what do we have? BL Heli pass through. Obviously, everything has that now. It's using F3, this stack. If you're going to purchase the whole stack, it'll give you the low ESR capacitor, which is highly recommended you add. And also, it's running F3 uh, microcontroller units on the ESC, which means it's a lot faster and uh, it's just going to be more future proof in the upcoming future here, which is something really great. Hopefully, I'll get my hands on one of those. 
Here's the T-Motor stack. It's a bit too pricey in my opinion for an F4. Is this an F4? Yeah, it's an F4. Uh, but when you think about it, the ESC itself is a really, really, really great ESC, which I, I really do like. And um, I have been actually using and I've used on 6S and it could handle quite a lot, uh, which uh, is, is a good thing. Here we also have SpeedyB just released a new flight controller, all-in-one flight controller. It's called the V2. Now, what's really unique about these is they have Bluetooth built in and they, they even created this app for it. And it is basically an identical copy of Betaflight that will allow you to do everything you can on the PC through Bluetooth or you can even connect it directly through a USB if you have the correct adapter. And it is insane. I'm using this app all day, whether it's a SpeedyB flight controller or not. You can easily do that and what's really cool is with the mumba f722s they have the built-in bluetooth and you can use this app to just do whatever you want and modify i mean even to the extent of the osd you can modify it which i find just absolutely phenomenal in the field so they're stating it also has an lc filter and it does have a nine volt regulator on board which is something really great to have so they have an lc filter as you can tell like i mentioned on the nine and the five volt because some cameras are susceptible to slight noise on the five volt regulator and this is really great that they've added some sort of filtration for the 5 volt and as well as the 9 volt and it's a huge benefit here and again it's an old one flight controller so you're not going to need um, any kind of uh, PDB power distribution board you can just connect your single ESCs directly to these side pads here which is really great um, and it's very useful very useful and the price is absolutely phenomenal for such a thing it's not overcharging for the extra functionality in here and I think this is a really great deal uh, for what you're actually getting in this package all right so like i mentioned everything will be linked down below in the order that we're checking them out now this is pretty interesting now we've moved to the fpv system there isn't that many things left on the multi-rotor part now if you take a look at the dji system right here we see that just the transmitter part is a hundred dollars and the camera is sixty dollars that's really great and when you find the full unit down here it's 180 bucks so if you get these together that's even cheaper than getting the whole unit here so I might start, you know, I might pick up the camera first when I save up 60 bucks, then that, and then later on I'll pick up the goggles, and then this way I'll even have my own system without having to pay $1,000. So I think that is a really, really great deal right here, actually. And that, that's making it very attractive now that it's that cheap. Hopefully the prices don't change, and uh, I'm actually very excited for this. So I'll have these also linked down below if you want to go ahead and check them out. And let's see what we have here. DVR, nothing really important. Okay, so here we have the True D, the Furious FPV True DX. It's their latest um, module for Fat Sharks. However, this is the latest module for Fat Shark that runs 2.4 gigahertz, and this will give you more range, better penetration, and uh, obviously it's going to cost a bit more here. Uh, I, as far as I know, there's only ones that make a 2.4 gigahertz module. So that 2.4 gigahertz market basically just belongs to Furious FPV here. I haven't tested the, I've, I have tested the 5.8 gigahertz, but not like a real test. Like I've just used it. So time will tell on that test and I should go out possibly today. I still have a couple hours to go fly. So I'll probably go test the 5.8 gigahertz. I'm going to try to get my hands on this one. I also have the older version, which should probably be even cheaper now uh to to purchase and it's gonna do just the same it's gonna do just as good possibly maybe this one's a little bit better but yeah so you get the whole thing and it's better to get the whole thing together because just the module itself here is like 120 bucks so i'll have this one linked down below see 120 bucks there it is just a single module itself here so i found this one the other day also this eashin monitor eashin monitors are usually really great i have a couple of them and i really do love them when i saw this one it's 50 bucks however don't let it fool you i don't think it's running diversity i could be wrong and uh, don't again let it fool you it's not a seven inch it's a five inch so the 72 channel i thought when i first purchased it i thought it was a seven inch but that was fine i was like you can know what five inch i could stick it on something so it's a five inch i think it has dual antennas not diversity but i could be wrong but you know i'm more sure that it's just going to be dual antennas here it takes an extra it could be powered off externally by 12 volts and it has a built-in battery it's a pretty small battery so you might need a battery mod if you want it to last a little bit longer here and i don't think you could be able i don't think you'll be able to charge it via micro usb which would have been really cool to have 72 channels and it does have dvr also so that's really great we have every single channel you want here and um it looks good i mean it, it, it's okay i mean it looks good if you're looking for one i do have one on the way so if you want to wait you can go ahead and do that here we have the analog input, so if you wanted to give it some sort of an input from external. And here we have analog input, so if you wanted to give input from something externally, such as like the docking or from a, from a goggle, like the sky zone or the fat sharks, 
you can do that even possibly i always i think they have an av output as well so it's really nice 50 bucks it's a really great deal it doesn't have the sun shade uh, i wonder how i want to see how bright the screen is and how usable it is outside so that would be something pretty interesting 50 bucks i think is a is a pretty good deal it's not that expensive which is really great also so here we have something pretty interesting i didn't even know that iflight did something like this so here we have the iflight goggles they're pretty small 40 channels and it has dvr not diversity and possibly can be it seems like it might be able to be removed into a screen but no not really uh what do we have here it does have dvr oh yeah we can remove the screen that's pretty cool okay that's great and so everything can be contained into that screen right there um that is pretty awesome. I mean, now when you think about it, you might as well just get this instead of that Eosheen screen because this just has the faceplate also, uh, which is really cool. And I think it also, yeah, and it has DVR. So that's really great. That's actually, uh, that's a nice budget option. But again, it's not diversity. So we'll see how well that goes when it comes out. So here we have the SkyZone Sky03 OLEDs. I have two on the way, one for my Patreon that's going to be given away and another one that's going to be for me to use. So I can't wait to get my hands on this. It does have everything you need. It does have DVR recording. The DVR system that's on there is going to be better than the previous Skyzone O2X. Uh, as far as I know, we have just everything. It takes up to a 6S. Um, yeah, this is going to be pretty interesting. I, I really can't wait to get my hands on this. And um, currently it's in the way and we should be able to see how well it's going to perform. So there's two versions. There's an S and an O. And I don't know the difference just yet. Possibly the camera in the front or maybe the head tracking. But I think maybe both of them have the head tracking. We'll eventually know this stuff pretty soon. So this again is getting pretty attractive. So we have the $1,000 version of the kit here, which will give you just one camera, one goggle, and the transmitter and the other things you might need. But this $820 one is super attractive. They give you two cameras the and the goggles which is really really awesome actually oh my god i'm getting so tempted to get this unfortunately i don't have the cash to get it just yet but hopefully i'll save up some to in order to get some so that's that's actually it's becoming much more attractive because the price is not just so far out there so right now we're in the radios and receivers and i just want to get an idea of how much everything is costing now if there's anything also that's new um let's see we have the new horus x10 express with access four hundred and seventy dollars it is so nice but it's so huge i have this one here but not the access version 380 bucks now so that's dropped in price it used to be like 400 as i remember if i remember correctly what do we have the x9d plus the x9d plus we have the special edition of the normal one and nothing really interesting let's see so if you don't know what this is this is a charger board you plug inside your x9 light so you can charge via usb and it's been working really great just use really good quality usb cable in order to be able to charge it to its full power uh very important to do that because mine wasn't charging fully because i was using a shitty usb cable and if you don't know how to use this just do a fr sky x9 light battery mod i've done a video on that and uh it's really cheap very useful and it's very convenient because you don't have to take out the 18650s anymore See, it's 70 bucks again. This is insane. I'm, I don't know when it came out. Was it 70 bucks or was it 50 bucks? I forgot. But if this thing is 50 bucks, I think everybody would jump on FR Sky. Uh, I would probably just buy another one just for the fuck of it because it's just so cheap and so good. That's, that's my main driver, which is the X9 Lite Pro currently. <clears throat> also, this is a must-have tool. This is the tool I use every single day. I think this is a newer version of it. But um, it's really useful because you just quickly swap between 1.5, 2, 2.5, and 3. Usually all of our quads are between 1.5 and 2.5. So you have everything you need. Takes minimum amount of space. And it's just overall great. And I also have these as well, uh, which I still use to this day. These have lasted me for about two years now. And uh, yeah, they're, they're really great as well. These exact ones right here. 12 bucks. They're very useful. It's way better than using Ellen keys because these won't really screw up your screws. Because one screw could really handle your quad useless at times. So now we're going to talk about product update and some product news. I know it was a pretty long video, but what I want to talk about today is the Runcam 5, the Cadix Tarsier 4K, which just came dead on arrival, unfortunately. I mean, it works. The FPV feed works, but the main board just didn't work, which was kind of a shame. I was really looking forward to do it. And a lot of people are waiting for that maiden of that quadcopter, which has become my favorite quadcopter, which was using the Diatone MK3 frame. 
and I've ended up replacing this with the Runcam Split 3 because by far one of the best HD split cameras I've ever tested. I do have the other ones on the way also, which should be coming in very soon. Also, Flywheel released these right here. These are race wire for toothpicks or micro class motors, which is pretty crazy. Now, if you don't know what those are, it's basically these right here, these LEDs, you see those? The three motor wires would connect to one side and then it'll route it through and then other wires would go here to the ESC. This will protect your wires from prop strike, but this will get damaged instead. And they've created one for the toothpicks, which are really tiny and really awesome. And they give you a pack for like basically five micros or five toothpicks. Uh, one side of the motor wires would connect here and then the other side would go there. So that's really great. Uh, they just sent me some of these, so I'll be using them very soon. Um, so yeah, they're really cool. Also, I did test the Flywoo motors, the 1103 ones, the low KV and the high KV. They're doing really great. And uh, I'll have the video with the thrust data and everything in the upcoming video. And I've already installed it on a toothpick, which is the iFlight toothpick, the low KV version. Because it turns out that the low KV version is the most powerful 1103 toothpick class motor I've tested so far. But again, I haven't tested many. And the only difference between them and the other ones also is that they're more efficient above 70% throttle. For example, the Happy Model, the iFly are really more efficient towards the mid throttle range. Uh, these are more efficient towards the higher end throttle and they're more powerful. And it seems as if that the RPM range is pretty steadily consistent over the full throttle range because if you've ever used any of these toothpicks, you could find that when you have like 43% throttle and then you go like to like 44%, that'll just immediately just do this. And uh, that kind of leaves it unpredictable. Um, but I don't know if this does the same thing, but from reading the RPM readings on the tasks, it, it's, it's still somewhat like that, but a little bit less. But I don't know how that's going to feel in the real world until I go fly this guy. And, well, that's it, guys. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. I'll have everything here linked down below. If you can check those out, those obviously greatly support the channel. And also, make sure you come join my Patreon. I have the QX7 giveaway today uh, at the end of the month. And also, the Sky Zones and the IOM ways and the uh, Skyzone OLEDs. So yeah, there's a lot of giveaways upcoming. And um, I'm planning on possibly giving this one away too. This is my recent budget. It's not even a budget build, it's a premium build. Just change the motors out and you get yourself a premium quadcopter. Uh, but I recommend just use those until they break because they're actually pretty good. And I'll leave it at that guys. Let me know what you guys think. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.